Hello there and welcome to 10 tips and tricks for defenses in RimWorld. In this video I'm going to put down some advanced things that will help you to keep your bases safe. All of these things are quite easy to understand and if you combine all of it together you will have a pretty pretty nasty thing. So number one I want to talk about spike traps. I love spike traps. They are really powerful and your people don't have uh, many accidents with them. Typically this really doesn't happen too often. It was one big fear when I was working with them a lot of mine like oh my god people could trigger mountain traps but no they are pretty reliable and sometimes well sometimes you have to treat somebody but the point here is these things offer you a pretty nice package of damage with a nice armor penetration for a low amount of resource they can be made out of wood out of stone but this takes forever so use this sparingly the work time is insane or even out of metal where these things hit like a truck whatever you might use these things can be stringed up like i did it here this layout forces the enemy to use them because no enemy wants to travel over barricade therefore they prefer the trap this is really cool and this way if you have the resource you can whittle down your enemy quite effectively spike traps also can be spread all over the map like i did here which is really powerful in case you're being attacked by drop pod raiders this can give you a nice edge when you just need to use the uh, advantage in the territory that you got either way spike traps are amazing and as long as you have the resource i really recommend you to use them Number two, I want to talk about turrets, some advanced insights about turrets. First off, the mini turret is rarely worth the effort when it comes down to damage. If you want to have damage by these, you will A, spend a lot of steel and B, require quite a lot of them. But if you have the steel to spend, by all means, they are reliable. But what I personally really like about these is they attract the enemy's aggression. If we put this thing down here, every melee enemy will first have the urge to punch this thing before they even think about going back to, to your barrel. Arcade. Therefore, these things can be used as acro magnets, and what's even better about them, they explode sometimes. Therefore, you can really take down a big pack of melee enemies this way by just scattering these things um, alongside of the way, like honey pots that can explode from time to time. I really like this about them. Just pay into uh, take into account that you need some spacing between the two like here so the explosions don't hurt each other and explosions will also hurt the power cords so plan accordingly if you want to use these things as damage sponges but apart from that the mini turret is a bit of a disappointment when it comes down to cost and effectiveness ratio so my main usage by now is used to is to use them as acro magnets much more than for the damage when I want to go for a damage, I like to use autocannon turrets and uranium slug turrets. Autocannon turrets are pretty good in regular engagements. They have an okay damage, some armor penetration, and it doesn't feel like too much of a waste if you use them against pirates. But if you have a lot of tribal people against you, you might even consider turning them off. And the uranium slug turret is for me personally exclusive for mechanoids. This thing is really good in taking down centipedes and whatnot but in most other scenarios it's a waste of resource because you need to rearm these bad boys with uranium but in later stages of the game these guys can be really really uh, good don't mind the uh, position where i built them though this is obviously crappy i just uh, wanted to feature these guys ideally they would be living somewhere around here of course good now let's move on over to number three i want to talk about a couple of intelligent layout tricks that you can use to keep the enemy at bay you already might have noticed the sandbag corridor here this is a cover denial thing this slows down the enemy the sandbag and this way the enemy has to walk over here only one enemy at a time while being shot at by our friends here the longer you make this corridor the more weapons you can deny out ideally ideally this corridor should be as long as the range of a sniper rifle and basically then nobody can take cover and shoot at your people anymore but that's not the only thing of course your base needs to be open at some end to avoid getting breached all the time but another nifty thing that you can do here like i did here is 
installing some doors that are permanently held open. This way, when a man-hunting horde of whatever comes, I just close my doors. I just move one colonist into the vicinity of that, and this will close the doors, and afterwards, you will have no more issues with any man-hunting horde of whatever. It's just gonna be, um person here you need to pass them once and now no animals can enter the base anymore but just take close attention that you forbid all these doors if you want this strategy but this way you can just sit out any man hunting pack while keeping your base open just like a wand really nifty little thing also what i like to use in my base designs generally leave some spacing or combats to flow through the base like these, these little corridors these buildings which i all can use if i get raided by drop pod raiders so i'm not that forced to use only this area here it's really important that you take into account with your layout you have one preferred spot where you will fight and you have lots of other sp spots where you don't want to fight but you need to make the best out of it plan your layout accordingly and last but not least i want to show this little cover trick here in case you didn't know it yet so this uh thing here as we have it is really really powerful i'm going to show you why let's move a shooter over here and you can shoot from behind the wall and the best part about it is if you want to shoot back you have to shoot past the cover and past the wall so this is the uh most powerful way of getting your uh, fighters into cover in a uh, combat situation. Okay, moving on over to number four. I want to talk about the importance of choke points. Choke points are spots where you can limit the enemy's number. So stuff like this little corridor here. You can sp uh, you can post down two melee guys and there can be only one guy entering through this narrow corridor and you can have shooters behind that. Same rules apply here at this point. You can even use little spots like these. Sp uh, uh, tuck down three melee fighters and you have a nice little spot where they can punch three at a, at a time against one enemy. Whatever you do, plan these choke points into your base as many as possible. You will not regret it, especially if you're playing an underground base. This helps against insectoids, but even with bases like these under the sky, drop pod raiders happen quite often and choke points help you to mitigate that, especially effective against melee enemies. Now, number five, I want to talk about multi-layering. So I did a little bit of an example here. So I have a wall behind the wall. So this is especially powerful against breach raiders and the like, because breach raiders, they love to go against the first best wall. And the more of these you can bring up, the more time you have to react to them and just gun them down. Because one fun part about breach raiders is they are really obsessed about kicking in doors and uh, picking down walls. And the more layers you have to your base, the more you can abuse their own stupidity against them. And that's a pretty nifty trick to make sure that the enemy does not um, breach your bases down. Multi-layering helps a lot against that. Moving on over to number six, the ambush room. So I have two examples of that here. So what I did here is create a little bit of a room and an entrance to where the enemy will flow through. So while the enemy will disperse in here, you can now put in a melee guy that can just uh, stall the enemy here and just shoot from here or whatever you want to do. You can use that also to get melee people into the back of the enemy. So for example, if there's one pesky sniper here that who has enough range to annoy you, nevertheless, you can just get a melee guy into his back. Also quite useful if you set up the ambush room into the trajectory of where the enemy travels. You can just seal this off with one melee guy and then lob frag grenades onto the incoming enemy especially powerful against melee attackers. Number seven, I want to talk about EMP and armor penetration. These are two things that are mandatory in the later stages of the game. So you want some EMP grenades or EMP launches, and you want some people to be able to fire them at the mechanoids that will attack you constantly. 
don't sleep on this. These things are making the battles against mechanoids so much easier. It's I cannot emphasize it enough. Also, stock up on stuff like sniper rifles or charge weapons against mechanoids. Also helpful against them are blunt weapons like warhammers and the like. The heavier, the better. Clubs are the poor man's uh, armor buster. So if you don't have anything, these are the lowest tier of armor penetrating weapons. These are mostly important against mechanoids. You will really feel the difference between enough armor pen versus a centipede and none. You really do. So, number eight. I want to talk about logistics. So, ideally, you want to have some weapons in the vicinity of the front. If you have to re-equip something, it really pays off to have a storage zone in the vicinity of your kill box. Also, what's really cool is to have a hospital situation really close to the front. So this room here can be easily brought into a medical situation or you do some medical beds there, store some medicine here. And what's really important, if you want to do hospitals, have at least two. One at the front and one at the back. So you are able to decide where you will bring your casualties first in case of an ideal fight that's coming through the front door or the unfavorable fight that will get you from behind or from the top so you have a hospital available for every purpose so this really pays off a lot ideally if you want to spot uh, if you just want to store some medicine at one spot what really helps is to make a one square stockpile zone just for medicine alone. This way you can be sure that this thing can be uh, can be fulfilled, increase the importancy, and this way people will store stuff there. And not all of it, because it's only one grid on the floor. Now then, number eight, uh, number nine, sorry. So I want to talk about gun variety and armor. So. My personal favorite for every defense situation is a spread of two-thirds assault rifles and one-third of chain shotguns. This way I have a nice spread of damage over all ranges. Of course you can uh, differ from that one, it's just my personal favorite. There's lots of other versions. People love heavy SMGs also in the short range area for larger amounts of attackers. I can totally uh, second that, it's a pretty powerful strat as well. Just choose to your own liking, but what's really important is you need weapons for medium to short range with a high firing uh, speed and a lot of stopping power for larger melee raids. When the enemy will come with 30 to 50 people pouring at your barricades, you need speed to mow them down and these weapons provide. Also, don't sleep on armor. The la later the game comes, the more armor you will need. So basically, flak gear, Marine armor and the like, if you can't afford it, it's totally worth picking it up. Even if your people are running around in day and night, it's so worth it because you never know when the enemy will attack and armor makes so much of a difference in terms of survivability. Doesn't save you from the occasional bullet through the heart or through the brain, but it does make your survivability a lot more like a... Uh... Ah, forgot the word. It, you survive a lot. No native speaker here. <laughs> <laughs> Number 10, and the last point on the list, mortars. Mortars are, in my opinion, a must-have. I personally always bring it up like that. A mortar and a little bit of a room behind it with a dedicated stockpile zone just for shells. And I only store my shells there, so if the occasional tantrum happens, only the shells and the uh, tantruming person will explode. This way, you have the opportunity to nuke down stuff on the map. Mortars are important for very, very uh, various reasons. They help you taking down mechanoid clusters, they help you taking down wonderful things like these, and they also help you in taking down enemy sieges. Basically, if the enemy wants to siege you, just fire at them but with your own mortar until they decide to attack you. It's the easiest way to break enemy sieges, in my humble opinion. Therefore, mortars are totally worth your money, and it's really a good idea to stock up on these, especially the later the game comes. They help you so much with these difficult, accessible things like these. Just when you're using it against mech clusters, pay attention to mech high shields. They're totally... Uh, 
busting your party there. Now, that's been all I had for this video. I hope you found it helpful. We're going to go over other things in future videos. Leave me comments. I know that 10 bullet points are not nearly enough for all the things you can do with defense in this game. Therefore, leave new tips. I appreciate that. So people browsing through the comments one day will have a plenitude of cool ideas. Leave a thumbs up or consider subscribing if you want to support. I'd appreciate that a lot. Apart from that, thank you so much for your time. Have a wonderful day and see you soon.